Hello everyone, my name is Alexi and today I'm going to talk about our way uh, to find a re production ready L2 solution for our version that's called Nova. Um, and before that I, I have to start with the importance of the privacy for blockchain users. Um, everyone should treat blockchain uh, as a Twitter account uh, for like your brand operations um, and it is a stopper for businesses to uh, to be to be on a blockchain to operate there and it's something that can be uh, can be it should be solved and with growing popularity of chain analysis tools um, it's even more easier and easier to track uh, all activity that uh, all, the, all the activity on the blockchain and um, that's because it's important to preserve privacy right and it shouldn't be a feature uh, it should be a product as a separate chain like Zcash, Monero and stuff it should be a feature so you uh, so you can use your like favorite uh, markets and DeFi uh, applications preserving privacy right um, uh, and the task is done uh, basically in some way. First step was the Tornado Cash, we call it classic. Um, it has like over 100,000 transactions on mainnet and 2% of all ether passed through the Tornado Cash. So it's pretty impressive and but there are some drawbacks. It has like fixed uh, pools uh, of certain amount of ether or whatever token, um, and it also very expensive uh, because it lives on the L1 and it requires one million uh, gas cost to deposit and like a bit less for withdrawal. But still, it's like uh, for many users, it's too expensive to use it. Uh, so the price of the privacy is too high. So that's why we uh, wanted to fix that, all those problems. Um, a new version that I'm talking about, the Tornado Cash Nova, has arbitrary amounts, so you can deposit any uh, like amount of ether there. Uh, it supports shielded transfers. And um, the most important for this presentation, it's, it uses sidechain under hood we would like to um, would like to use L2 and but we use a sidechain and here's why. Uh, so you can understand what we wanted from the L2 solution, I would like to um, like give you a simple explanation how it's how the user flow is gonna look like. So today, when you <coughs> deposit into Tornado Cash Nova, you do just one simple transaction. Uh, you just sign uh, push confirm uh, in your MetaMask. Uh, it sends uh, Ether to XDAI bridge uh, because we use Gnosis chain and XDAI bridge. And, um, so it, you, it sends uh, Ether to XDAI bridge and then it forwards it to the Gnosis chain and to the tornado pool. Um, later, and users don't need to switch me, um, networks in the uh, in the MetaMask. It just works automatically, and users sees uh, the um, the up updated balance. Uh, when in case of shielded transfer, it uses a relayer to preserve privacy, so they communicate using HTTP. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, you, the uh, users don't need to switch MetaMask as well. And for the withdrawal, uh, users also use the relayer that f um, calls uh, Tornado Pool. Uh, Tornado Pool rele releases some amount of ether that goes to XDAI Bridge, and then uh, Bridge is settled on L1 for the user. And as you see, we try to build like as seamless pro process as possible. So uh, 
not to introduce like a lot of complexity by L2 because a lot of people just, they don't need to know about the L2 uh, and stuff in order to use an application, right? And there are like a bunch of types uh, of the bridges. Um, so I'm gonna briefly talk about them and why they are good or bad. Uh, the first one uh, is when you implement a light client on a smart contract level, for example, as near did. <laughs> the rainbow bridge has like light client of near protocol on the uh, L1, like mainnet, and then they have like light client um, of mainnet on the near uh, side. It's quite expensive and because you have to upload all the headers uh, from both chains. Um, there are Oracle based, uh, but I'm not sure if they're in production. Like for example, layer zero, um, they use Chainlink uh, as a source of trust for the real layers to relay some messages between uh, different uh, sites. Uh, that's why they support multiple chains. Uh, and there are roll-up bridges, I mean like default bridge of any roll-up, like Optimistic, uh, Arbitrum, or ZK roll-up. Um, so they, they used your own approach. And the last category, uh, I would call it multi-sig, because usually you have like a bunch of validators, uh, and they like basically it's a multi-sig, and they there is a threshold uh, to execute a transaction on a, one of the sites. And so why we cannot just uh, get uh, take the optimistic rollups? Because by default they have seven days withdrawal delay, and it's not going to be seamless process when you when your user withdraws uh, either from uh, application, right, uh, from the smart contract, um, the seven days is too much, right? Um, ZK Labs, uh, they work uh, faster, it can be minutes on, or hours, um, but not all of them support EVM, so we cannot just um, deploy our smart contract <clears throat> there. Or if there are um, ZK Rollup that support TVM, it's still um, hard to implement uh, everything that we need in order to verify uh, zero knowledge proofs. Uh, and even if we implement it, it introduces a lot of complexity and we have to find like auditors for that stuff and so <clears throat> we would like to avoid that, right? So the last category, the multi six. Um, I would say for most of them, it's a lack of decentralization. They can be custodial, they introduce some slippage uh, for withdrawal, um, or they don't support your token, or there's not uh, enough liquidity for that particular token, and so many other stuff. Um, so what was our, our way? <clears throat> we just treat it as a like a better version. Uh, we set deposit limit to one ether, and we just pick, picked one, the solution that there is on the market, and it was XDI bridge on Gnosis chain, and it allowed us, it allows us to do like seamless process that we uh, wanted to achieve. So it has pretty decent like timings for deposit and withdrawals. Uh, it's kind of safe because it's been operated uh, by a set of validators for four years. Um, in, and it also allows to do some cool features that we use in production, like cross-chain messages on a VM level. Uh, so right now, the Tornado Cache Nova smart contract is upgradable but upgradable by governance that lives on L1. So, and we already had some 
uh, upgrades. So people voted for the upgrade and the message was um, propagated from L1 to L2 and uh, the bridge changed the implementation. Um, so, and one more important feature is exact, um, so withdrawals of exact amount. Um, for example, if a user wants to pay a merchant for, the, for a product, they want to send exact amount of like, ether or whatever talking. And uh, usually uh, bridges don't, uh, they don't allow you to do that. They, they have some uh, AMM building in it or they require you to pay some fees and they will just cut it from your uh, amount. Um, so that's inconvenience, right? But with that bridge, it's possible. Um, and the last one, but not least, it execute, uh, executes transactions on target chain. Uh, what I mean by that? So when you deposit from L1 to L2, someone uh, needs to like do the transaction on L1, L2. Um, usually you have to claim on other side, uh, as well as like when you withdraw from L2 to L1, uh, they usually, the bridges usually give you, give you the button like to claim your tokens on the other side because no one wants to pay the L1 fees. Uh, with this bridge it's possible. Um, so this is it. That's how we ended up uh, using sidechain instead of L2. Uh, we understand that uh, it has less security than, uh, for example, like rollups uh, that there are, but they don't have like uh, they don't provide uh, good user experience yet. And what would be ideal is to have uh, true L2 with fast withdrawals, with cross-chain messaging, and exact amount that I mentioned, and execution of transactions for the user. Um, and of course, it sh uh, have to be, has to be trustless as possible, and it would be awesome to support multiple chains uh, so users can enter from one chain, from mainnet, and then exit to another chain. So this is it. I'm happy to answer your questions. There are. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the audience? Oh yeah, we've got a few, okay. This is uh, uh, gonna be a nice throw because it's far away. Uh, who was first with, yeah. Hey. I want to ask, how do you support uh, arbitrary amount? Uh, how is it uh, anonymized? It's not about the bridge or yes. sidechain and yes, stuff, it's, it's just about the application. And um, there is a um, UTXO model inside it. So on, on a snark circuit, you just prove that you have some UTXO and you're gonna spend it to like, uh, like when you, you can, you're gonna split it to like, to have a change to, to you and then you're gonna pay to another person, right? Or, um, so that's how we, we used another model uh, for the, for the, this product. And it allows us to introduce arbitrary amounts. In the, uh, in the first version, we have to have um, like, uh, what you're saying that you uh, deposit one value but withdraw it in uh, different amounts, in separate amounts? Yes, you can uh -huh. do that. And you can do shielded transfers inside the pool. Um, so. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, hello. W will you have a bridge between uh, uh, 
Tornado Classic and Tornado Nova? Um, I'm not sure if it is needed because you can just withdraw from the Tornado Cash Classic and then deposit to a new one. There'll be fees. There'll be fees. Yes, but one. someone uh, has to pay. <laughs> Okay. So it's <laughs> that's how projects do the upgrade uh, upgrades. They just deploy a new version, and if users wanna uh, wanna use the new product, they just withdraw from the previous one and deposit to a new one. But in our case, uh, Tanana Cash Classic is like kind of immortal, I would say, because it's has is its anonymity set and it's already huge and I think there are going to be always people that want to use it because of its like uh, anonymity that it, it provides. Okay, um, this is more of a like double check. Uh, by supporting messages on the EVM level you mean that uh, it is possible for a contract on Ethereum to send a message to another contract on layer two, right? Right, that's correct. Oh, okay, thanks. Who needs the box? Okay, so there's uh, one more question from me then. Uh, if you go back to, to slides on different bridges, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this one, no, no, you know, the other one. Uh, the, yes, this one. It seems to me that uh, your only concern uh, for the optimistic rollups today is this uh, seven-day withdrawal delay. Yes. Uh, yes. And I mean, we all know that you know there are some liquidity providers that will happily withdraw uh, literally arbitrary amounts by uh, verifying the state with themselves. So for them, it's a risk-free operation as long as they do have liquidity. Mm -hmm. um, Good example uh, for the future would be uh, MakerDAO providing you unlimited liquidity to actually do that if you're obviously withdrawing DAI because MakerDAO can mint as much DAI as you need. So I'm kind mm -hmm. of curious uh, whether you know this is something that you considered. Yes, um, yes, that's the something that we just discussed with the Arbitrum team. So yeah, they uh, optimistic and Arbitrum both supports like fast withdrawals with uh, like additional um, parties, like liquidity providers, and it's it just not yet in production. And that's why we couldn't use them, utilize it function. All right, so if there are no more questions, so thank you very much. Oh, there's one more, sorry. Hello. Uh, so I know that you've been uh, been doing um, uh, token incentives before. Um, actually, I don't know if you're still doing it. But what have your learnings been, and do uh, do you plan to continue doing that in the future to to incentivize uh, the liquidity pool or the an anonymity pool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we indeed we less. There, there were there was a program. It's called anonymity uh, um, anonymity mining. So, <clears throat> uh, the program one finished like a year ago, as I remember, and it was used to set up like the anonymity set in Tornado Cash Classic. Um, and uh, looks like it's a good practice to like speed up the anonymity set in the um, in the pool and. Probably you are going to use that in future because it's a good, good motivator for people to deposit some assets and do the activity within the pool, which is useful for uh, other people. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much again, Alexei. And uh, yeah. Thank you.